I'm glad you're mom's secret boyfriend. I wish you were my dad. You found the best place for your vengeful needs. In this Royal AI exclusive cheating revenge story, we'll go into the most brutal act of betrayal so far. When a wife is caught cheating, the husband finds out he was betrayed by many more within his family. OP has a special message just for viewers of this channel. So be sure to stay till the end. Before we start, offer the like button, a toothpaste filled Oreo. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. This cheating revenge story might be disturbing to cheaters. It's been 13 days since I created this account to get it out of my chest. I lost my dignity, my pride, my love. I'm a naked man who will be walking the walk of shame because of what I did. I disowned and destroyed my family. This is the only place I'll write this out. I don't intend for this to blow out. If it does, I'll delete this account. I'm 48 now. This story started when I was 20. I met a girl who I thought was perfect. She was 19. We just clicked. Had the perfect chemistry. Dated for two years before she got pregnant at 21. We moved in. I was living with my mom at that time. My father died when I was 15. Mom never remarried. She had a consultancy firm where I worked as a receptionist. My late father's construction business was sold off when I was young. I became a father at 23 to a baby girl. She was the most beautiful girl. The bond between me and my girlfriend deepened after this. Two years later, we get married. I join a job as a computer programmer. Earned a six-figure because it was in high demand and our lives take off. My wife wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, I agreed, but also recommended she take up a part-time job to spend her time. Things take a turn when I was 29 and she was 28, her father had a terrible accident that made him immobile from the waist down. If it wasn't bad enough, he was the sole earner. I had a talk with my mom and in-laws, consisting of her mother, father and sister. They lived in a rented place and now their sole earner is immobile, finances were an issue. So I offered for them to live with us. Sister-in-law took up a part-time job as did my wife to support her family. During this time, I also inherited from my late grandmother's will, which was split in two and was put partly in a college fund and held as insurance by my mother. I had no issues with it, but my wife wanted to buy a house with the money so we could move out. She specifically wanted to buy a house on her mother's name with my inheritance. So both sisters would work to pay off my inheritance, this was an issue. So this put some distance between us, because her proposal struck me as weird. Two years passed by, my mother suffered a stroke as she had several clots. Doctors did an emergency surgery fast. Luckily, it was successful. But my wife wanted my mom to stay at the hospital rather than come home, because it would be difficult to have two patients at home at once. I told her I agree, but I will hire a nurse to take care of my mother. She denied. She wanted me to hire two nurses, one to take care of my father-in-law and one for my mother. If it wasn't this, then none should be hired. I told her she will have to pay for her father's expense, because I was already handling bills, groceries, taxes, our daughter's private school, and now this nurse. I won't be able to pay for her father's nurse. They should be able to afford it, because both her and her sister make a combined of nearly 60k a year, which was probably more than enough given that they lived and ate free. My relationship with our daughter soured a bit at this time. She began disrespecting me and was mean to me openly. I thought she was just having child issues as she was eight at the time. My mother had a speedy recovery and voiced her opinions on her own situation. She wanted to sell her consultancy firm and put the money in my name. My wife didn't like this and started an argument right then and there, because she wants my mother to give it to our daughter and my wife, as I had already gotten my share of the inheritance from my grandmother. During this, there was something that surprised me even more. Her parents were present but they stayed quiet. As if they were giving tacit approval. My mother reminded her that it was her money, and that she won't mind giving her inheritance in form of insurance plans. Nope, my wife had problems with me because you see, we don't have a joint account. She can't access my account, neither can I to hers. So she starts arguing that she wants a joint account. We had an argument, and it was decided that my mom would grant the whole sum to me. That was the end of it. So life goes on for a few months, with a mild tension hanging in the air. Then suddenly, father-in-law passed away. Which was especially rough on my wife. I tried to console her every way I could. 
handled both household and workload all by myself, not meaning this in a bragging way at all. I really tried to do everything I could, but it still wasn't enough for her. Besides this, the funeral fell on my shoulders and I took the responsibility. It goes well, but still she'd complain how I could have done better. She began to sleep in separate rooms with our daughter, who was 9 years old now. I convinced her to attend therapy and things settled down. We were intimate again, reconnected in a better and stronger way, but I sensed something was off with our daughter. She would shut me down every time I want to talk to her. It hurts seeing her like this. Two years pass by as I try to build a better bond with our daughter. This time around, my mother passes away. She had another stroke and sadly didn't survive. I was devastated by losing her. You see, she raised me all by herself for the majority of my life, because my father was always busy. It was also the reason I wanted our daughter to have a better relationship with both of us, and why I was giving tremendous amount of effort to achieve that. I fell into a depression without a response from my wife. My daughter didn't attend the funeral, which really saddened me. Two months passed by and I was still grieving. One day, my mother-in-law approached me and blatantly told me, that I should move out, because I was overly depressed and I should just get over my mom's death. I'm really ruining the atmosphere and it'll lighten me up. I calmly told her, I want to remind you of your husband's passing, you and both of your daughters were in grief for seven months. I never asked you to move out, and how dare you even ask me to move out of my own house. She was taken aback and went fully quiet. I talked to my wife regarding this, but she didn't give me any useful response. I guess around two days later, the following incident occurred. I was casually grabbing something from the fridge and noticed my daughter's phone. A text came in that said something like, It's good that the old witch is gone now, you can have the house to yourselves. We can have a party on your birthday. Excuse me, what? My daughter was 11 at the time, so this message is odd, besides, what old witch? I'm intrigued and start reading the text conversation on the phone. Yep, the messages were referring to my mother. My daughter called me an ape and controlling, even though I never denied her anything except for things that I deemed useless, she wanted a pony at 6, koala at 9, panda and her own car at 11, who does that? I called my wife and showed her these. Her response was clear, she was mad at me for snooping through my daughter's phone. We had an argument about it, before she stormed off. She began to sleep in separate beds again. I try to make amends, but she shuts me down immediately every time. It took me to agree to our daughter's birthday party to get her into talking to me again. Roughly three years pass by, for quick review, my daughter is 15 now, I'm 38 and my wife is 37. I had to go to another city for a summit for four months. I landed up in another job that provided me with tons of opportunities and even better pay. Everything went well, but when I returned, my wife's entire demeanor drastically changed around me. She quit her job, would hang out more with friends, which I supported, dressed up in more expensive and posh clothes, you get the idea, I thought it was a change of habit and was fine with it. But our daughter wasn't just shutting down anymore, now she would openly disrespect me, and was mean right to my face. I kept trying not to freak out. It had never been this bad before. Sister and mother-in-law and wife kept telling me it was just hormones, and she's just a kid. Even though I was upset, I blindly trusted what they said. But there was another unusual change that happened when I got back. Bedroom sexy time skyrocketed at this time between me and my wife. She would want me to do all these new things, which I loved, and be kinky. I enjoyed every bit of it. Except for one day, when she brought up a kink of me being caged, as in like chastity caged. I wasn't comfortable with that. We argued a week over this before she got frustrated, and dropped the topic. The sexy time dwindled here. Things go worse from this point. My wife suddenly wants to go on a girl's trip with her sister and our daughter. I had no issues as it'll be great. I had to pay a nice sum for it, but that's okay. She didn't call me for three days, had longer chats only with her mom, and I had small chit chat with her here and there. Something felt odd to me. When I brought up the topic and asking her about this, she told me she was just tired. So I dropped it and I asked to see her photos, as I was interested. Saw a lot of friends, both male and female. Now my senses are going on alert and she notices I guess, because she assured me it was just her friends, but only a few male friends that were there. I saw nothing else that I found suspicious, and her assuring me made me feel okay with it. Two months later was our daughter's birthday and I was eager to plan something for her as a surprise. When I approached my wife, she asked me not to, 
as they wanted to celebrate it with a girl's night out. I was taken aback and voiced my opinion. Who the frick takes their daughter with her, for a girl's night out? She told me it wasn't like, that, but rather her friends and their daughters only. No alcohol would be involved. I didn't want to ruin their plans for my daughter's birthday, and putting it like this, I was fine by it. My birthday was around the corner after this event. Keep in mind our sexy time life is bland now. It's once a week, I tried to initiate more but she always came up with excuses. I never celebrated my birthdays after my mom passed away, but each year my wife gives me gifts, so I kinda expected this. So on this particular day, my wife tells me she has to go shopping with our daughter. Goes off the grid for 6 hours. No calls, no texts, and no gifts. When I ask about her prolonged absence, she tells me one of her friends got into accident, and she stayed there, therefore couldn't receive nor answer my calls. I drop it. Two weeks after this, while my wife was showing me some pictures from our daughter's girls camp, our daughter called her that she needed her. She handed me her phone and went out of the room. While I sat there with the phone, a text came in telling our daughter. Hey, my dear daughter, I'm sorry for this late reply. I'm the lucky one to be your mom's boyfriend. Tell your mom I love her and kiss her for me. I'll text you soon. It took me a whole freaking minute to read the text over and over again, and I still couldn't believe myself. As I'm confused and my hands start clamming up, I scroll up to see my daughter texted this person back. I'm glad your mom's boyfriend really wished you were my dad. What? I went straight to the toilet, locked the door and read the whole conversation. All things noted, apparently this guy is having an affair with my wife, and our daughter knows. This guy is having an affair, with my wife, and our daughter actually knows? What in the freaking world? I saw pictures of vacations, girls trips, our daughter's birthday. They went on a candlelight dinner as a family, seriously? This guy was kissing my wife right in front of our daughter, and my daughter was pointing at them, like it was some sort of a good romantic thing? What's more? There it is, my sister-in-law knew. The more I scrolled, the more my heart sank. It was this guy who gave my wife the idea about chastity. It seemed to me that my daughter and wife were both texting about this. What's more, this account wasn't even her real one. It was one with a different username, nonetheless, this guy apparently knew everything about my family. Even on my birthday my wife and daughter were with this guy? At his house? Seriously, what the fuck? It's not even the worst. Of course, he was over at my house, slept on my bed, while I was gone for 4 months. Even worse, it has been going on for 4 whole years. 4 fucking years? My moment of despair and utter betrayal, was suddenly broken by a loud bang on the toilet door. It was our daughter. I just came out and stared at her. This was the first time, I stared at my daughter like this. The same daughter, that I looked at with pride, love, and respect, just sank to indifference and disappointment. I wasn't even angry. She was red and crying. She didn't know what to say. My wife stood there. As well as my sister-in-law and mother-in-law. I pointed my attention to my mother-in-law, asking her if she knew what her daughter did. My wife interrupted by saying, We can talk. I don't know what came over me as I yelled out, Shut up, or I'll strangle you right now. It was so loud that even neighbors might have woken up. I readjusted my attention back to my mother-in-law and asked her again, if she knew what her daughter did. She nodded. She fucking nodded. I looked at my daughter and told her, I'm sorry I couldn't be a better father, but I'll do this one thing for you, and divorce your mother. So this guy can be your father, as that's what you so dearly want. I called my wife her mother for the first time while addressing her. I looked at my wife and told her she has 9 days, till month's end, to pack up and leave with her family. I'll hand over the divorce papers later. But for now, move out. She kept crying, but my yelling and response might have taken her off guard. She knew I wasn't in a mood to argue or even talk. I gave up. It's over. That was that. I couldn't sleep the whole night. Just stared at the wall, and my phone, looking at our family photos. At morning, I tell my wife not to cook for me, cause I really don't trust her, she might poison me, not gonna lie, she broke down and I felt I was out of line with this. I added that I was going to file for divorce, today. She tried to talk, but I had none of it. Mother-in-law joined in and asked me to wait and listen to her, before making my decision. I went on with my plan. I had a friend who's a 42-year-old lawyer, I meet up with him and lay all my cards on the table. 
he just tells me this. I've been a lawyer for 12 years, and haven't seen a case infuriating and saddening as yours. He hugged me. Told me his uncle is the family judge who probably will be handling my case. But before that, I need proof, loads of it. He gave me a number of someone who happens to be a private investigator, who I hired. Went back home and threw my daughter's phone, but there was nothing there. Talked to my wife, she told me sorry over and over again, but no real remorse. My daughter and in-laws didn't came anywhere near me. My daughter was even at the point of being afraid of me so much, that she lived two days at her friend's house. Her friend's father called me and I had to inform him of the entire situation. He said he's sorry. It was hard for him to believe what my daughter did, as it should be. No man ever could dream of getting betrayed like this, by his own children. The private investigator found the guy. Turns out he's a jackass, a coward from the countryside who fears commitments, is a small-time thief, used to work at the same place as my wife. I visited his place with my lawyer, personal investigator and a friend, who happens to be a police officer. The guy openly admitted to the affair. Turns out he was attracted towards my wife, and accepted a challenge from his co-worker, that he will have her in his bed. It soon turned to love. He was actually in love with my wife. Turns out, it was him who called my mom witch, to my daughter. It was a separate conversation and he was just friends with my daughter, even before my wife dropped the news that she's having an affair with this guy. He was even willing to provide a written statement and video of him confessing, providing photos and even a witness, for exchange of promise, that word of this won't reach his office or his sickly mom, who's 60 plus with heart disease on the countryside, and a few thousand bucks. I agreed. My wife moved out with her family. She took a few more thousand from me, to pay for the lease. The divorce hearing comes up and I lay all my cards on the table. Every screenshot, every video of her boyfriend confessing, every lie, receipts and even photos of them holding hands and kissing. The look on her face soured. She said I was abusive, but this claim was easily dismissed, as there was no proof and if I was abusive, why would I allow her to have a job, or provide for her family while letting them live at my house? She had nothing to prove her claims, and even her lawyer was taken aback by the amount of proof we had. She conceded at the end and told me she's incredibly sorry for what she did, she would do anything to make up for it, even if she needed the rest of her life to do so. Judge said I'll have to pay spousal support to her for four years. There was no custody battle, as our daughter was already 17 at the time. She wished to stay with her mother. I had no problem with that, we'll come to this later, my wife will receive half of my house and keep her car, but nothing more than that. I offered to buy her share of the house. I have a hefty sum left by my mother remember? Another reason was that I believe that the house market will go up in the future, so I'll aim to make a profit from there. From here, I requested one thing from the judge. I wanted to have my name removed from the birth certificate, this of course was not possible, so if I can't, then proceed to disown our daughter. The look on my wife's face was just the best thing. Her face turned white. She responded how could you? I reminded her, she put me to this. My daughter yelled. Dad, you can't do this. Right there in the courtroom. I ignored her. Judge was a good man and understood my sentiments. However, he advised me to forgive. There is no way I can disown her legally, but I can cut her off from my will. That was that. It took me eight months to get the divorce finalized, and I couldn't be happier. When I got out, I hugged my lawyer. He saved me. Ex-wife and ex-daughter came walking up to me. Wife told me. I know I don't even have face to ask for forgiveness, but can you find in your heart, to forgive me? I replied I don't have a heart, she ripped it out. Daughter jumped in by saying. I'm sorry for what I did, I will be the best daughter, just give me another chance, dad. This girl has the audacity to call me dad. I reminded her I wasn't her dad, as I'm an ape, if she remembers correctly, and that her dad is the one she wanted. She should be happy that her mother is single now. After this I left, while she chased after me. On our way back, I asked my lawyer, if I could let the company my ex-wife works at, know what she was up to these years. He advised me to get a restraining order first. With the help of my police friend and the judge, I was able to get one. Now it's time to go nuclear. Made five destructive copies of evidence. One for the company, one to be sent to ex-wife's boyfriend's sickly mom, I don't care, he didn't respect my home and my mom. I can't respect his, one stayed with my lawyer and one was for me, to burn. The last copy, I left it in my locker. 
The fallout was quite the show as they were fired. My ex-sister-in-law had the guts to call me out. She told me, she always known me as a brave, upstanding, loyal, strong and humble man, but never thought I'd ruin her sister's career like this. She yelled at me for getting her sister fired. I chuckled and reminded her that it was her who supported the affair. I might be a coward for doing this, but what she did made her a homewrecker. I asked her, why she was so mad. Is there a possibility she spread her legs for her sister's boyfriend too? She was sickened and blocked me online. Mother-in-law reached out, have to admit, forgot about this woman, she apologized for what happened. She couldn't raise her daughters well. I called her out. Told her she was a horrible and greedy woman. I wouldn't give a darn if she passes, and she should be thankful for having a person like me as her son-in-law in the past, before blocking her. As for the boyfriend, turns out his mother specifically hated infidelity, because this guy had daddy issues. His dad left him before he was born. She did end up passing away from a heart attack. That's all I know. Made me feel sad he was abandoned, but therapy made me realize I shouldn't. It's human nature. I didn't knew of this beforehand. He nuked my marriage and family, I replied the favor. As for my daughter, she kept reaching out apologizing for every word. I blocked her, but she won't stop reaching out to me. I had to change my number. Sold my house 8 months after divorce was finalized. Got a hefty sum and moved to a different city. Started afresh, attended therapy, joined a gym, got a better paying job. Got into boxing and bought a house, invested in cryptos and stocks. Made good money. Got into the dating market when I turned 42, met and remarried again at 44. Now I have a better wife who's amazing in every way, knows the value of a real relationship because she herself faced the same situation as me, no kids in tow. We now have a four-year-old son together and I couldn't be any more happier. I executed my will that excluded my daughter, so she won't be getting anything from me. I don't know how but she was able to reach out to me two weeks ago. Sent eight long paragraphs detailing how sorry she is. She's been in crippling depression, therapy, working hard. I got a call from my lawyer which surprised me even more. My daughter turned up at my lawyer's office with $20,000. I don't know where she got this from. She made the request to return every last penny I spent on her, will keep on apologizing for the rest of her life, but all she really wants, is to have me back in her life. She can't stay like this anymore. It's eating her alive. I don't know much about what happened, but as I heard, her mother, my ex-wife, turned depressive and had to be admitted into a mental hospital. Her sister, my ex-sister-in-law, moved in with an alcoholic abuser and is pregnant with a second kid. My ex-mother-in-law passed away. She had an accident, lost a lot of blood and if she survived, she would have ended up like her late husband. So now my ex-daughter is living alone, working at a part-time job, because she couldn't finish her education. She borrowed some money from friends that stayed, also heard nearly all of her friends cut her off, after I had a talk with her friend's dad. People called her toxic and moved on. Not gonna lie, hearing all this shattered my heart. My wife is pushing me to build a bridge with my ex-daughter. Saying she realizes her mistakes and she needs me now more than ever. If I don't help her now, she won't get up and will keep on falling, endlessly. I don't know how to feel. When you're a father, a lot of responsibilities that you can't simply outrun, lies on your shoulders. I gave my daughter the world and she stabbed me. I was hurt and angry but more, my pride shattered. My love shattered. My decision to cut off my daughter was the toughest one, but I still made that decision. I don't know if I should contact my ex-daughter now. My lawyer said I should, because it's the right thing to do. I need to let it go for myself. Funny how life can change, in an instant. Well, shit. I really hate stories like this. A 20-year-old marriage shattered just like that. I'm really scared of this happening to me, since I have a current girlfriend and we are both young. You don't owe your daughter or anyone shit. Build a new life and start over. Godspeed stranger. This was heartbreaking. The decision to contact your ex-daughter should be yours alone. Try to remember that she was poisoned against you from a young age, by your ex-wife and her family. There was no chance of her forming a bond with the negativity pushed against you. It seems like she only realized what you did for her, once you were gone. If you do decide to reach out, that does not mean you ever have to give her money again. 
or put her in your will. It might even help you get some closure to finally talk to her, without your ex in the same room. I hope whatever you decide in the long run you don't have any regrets. I also feel so sorry for your daughter, to be manipulated from such a young age, she never knew any better, because she had people around her constantly teaching her to betray you. I'm being honest. I originally just wanted to post this and get off from Reddit. It took me two weeks to muster the courage to write it out. You see bud, I hold this one simple thing in very high regards in life, respect. It was taken from me. Someone pointed out I should post it here. Which I did. For what I am going to do, I don't know. My new wife is pushing me to build a bond. Truth to be told, she was against me writing a will excluding my daughter. She came from a broken family and was in an abusive marriage before me. I want to develop a better bond but I don't know if I can. I regret what I did. I failed as a man, as a father and as a lover. I have no words. You did not fail as a father. It was your ex that failed to be a good mother. Children mirror adults and given that your ex-daughter spent her entire childhood with her mom at home, while you were away for work, she picked up what was said and done when you were away. Respect is learned around the age of 8 I think. It is totally up to you to make a bond with her, but she is definitely a victim. I would at least have a conversation with the daughter. It sounds like she was a child when this happened, early teens still count as a child. She was likely heavily influenced by your ex-wife and her shitty boyfriend. Now that she's older, she's making her own uninfluenced decisions. Ultimately it is up to you, but you've already cut her out of the will and disowned her, and she's likely eaten alive by the guilt of what younger her did. She went through therapy, and so did you, so that means that she had an unaffiliated party advising her, that makes her want to do right. See what she has to say, and if it's not good for you, it's not good for her either. Good luck, and I'm so sorry this happened. This is pretty much spot on. Thank you. I received tons of attention and spotlight that I never intend to receive in the first place. Few YouTube channels published my story without my consent and it was awful of them. I would specifically request them not to publish my story anymore. I gave permission to one channel, which is Royal AI. I won't be doing this for views or attention. He reached out politely and seems to be a good man, I don't mind him publishing. I'd also ask the people who say I'm a troll and doing this for karma, to get over it. I'm not. You can take my karma, I'm going to delete this account, I don't care about that. I've got bigger issues to worry about. Back to my story. I've sat with my lawyer, therapist, and my current wife to talk about my situation. For the record, all of them suggested that I talk first. Baby steps. I make small talk to her before meeting. Once we meet, see things through. It's a long way ahead. My wife said she always wanted a daughter, we could be a family again. I was pretty much quiet the whole time. Pretty much everyone here commented I give my daughter a second chance. It sounds wonderful right? But the years of lying, dishonesty, disrespecting, yelling, constant name calling and trauma that I faced won't go away, but will rather come back in an instant. Now I have a wife who is loyal, honest and loves me. I have a four-year-old son whose upbringing depends on me. It's a very sensitive time of my life that I'm betting on. It's my late 40s. I'll be turning 50 the next year. I don't know how much longer I will be alive. No one knows that. I know, with my daughter and son beside me, I'll have the world but I simply can't. It wrenches my heart. It tears my heart. I've become a man who developed fear of lying, fear of infidelity. I don't want to face that again, or God knows what will I do to myself. I hope everyone at this point got the idea I'm pointing to. If not, I'll say it straight out. I don't want to reach out or reconcile with my daughter. It's even hard to write this out. When I said it in front of my wife, lawyer and therapist, there was this unbreakable silence. They were not expecting this, especially my wife. I told them my reasons for that. I can't bring myself to do it. I'm a coward. I'm an asshole. I might probably be the worst father. But I can't do it. I just can't. We haven't talked in years. I don't know what she's like. I don't know if she's saying the truth, but I don't want to take any risks. I won't have this chance ever again. I'm risking my sanity, 
my family, my life and the most sensitive time of my life. If it fails, it'll haunt me. I don't know if I can recover from it. But yes, I couldn't have possibly convinced all three of them. We reached to a conclusion. I will send her an email, or meet just this one time, it won't be easy, I will lay all my cards on the table. Tell her the truth. I can forgive her, but I can't bring myself to have a bond with her. When we reached home, I saw my wife was upset with me. We talked about it. She expressed that what my daughter need is guidance, a proper one. She never had that. I told her she's not a girl anymore. She's a woman. She's grown up to learn herself. My wife told me the least I can do is at least give her closure and the help she needs. I asked what she means by that. She told me maybe I can help her get back into education. That way, it'll help her get back on her feet. I told her no at first, but after thinking a while, I think it's a good idea. Children make mistakes, teenagers hide them, adults own up to it. It's a part of life. I tried to be the best father I could be, but I failed miserably in that. Now it's the least I can do. But it is still tough to be in that shoe. You see, I don't know if she will honestly put it into education. So I'm still hesitating. My wife and I have 800k in savings out of which 600k belongs to me. I plan to send around 50k for her education, housing combined, along with the 20k that she intended to send me, I hope it's with her, and send her an email summarizing everything out. That's the thing. You know, part of me wants to give it a try. But the stakes are high. I have a young family now. I'll be risking them. It took me years to get back up. I can't afford to do that once again. For those who were saying that I became a better person. It wasn't overnight. I got into crippling depression. Became an alcoholic. If I hadn't met my current wife, I don't know what I would have been doing now. Truth to be told, my fate is far worse than that of my ex-wife. She can work out be sane again. But me? I'm losing someone who is a part of me, while being in my full senses with the right intentions. How am I ever going to recover from that? Few Redditors said, what if I was in my 80s, on my deathbed and pondering if I made the right choice? Let me be honest with you, there is no right choice in this situation, my therapist said this, reconciliation is right, but so is to leave things as they are. I know I'll be abusing myself, when I get to that stage. But for now it is my decision. In my full consciousness. Please know I felt your pain and betrayal. It's one thing to be betrayed by your wife, but when it's also by others surrounding you. I know it's hard to forgive, but your wife twisted your daughter's mind from a very young age. She prevented her from ever having a great relationship with you. Your daughter is a victim as well. I agree that at her age, she should have known better, but she was already damaged and made to choose mom's side. My daughter is special to me and if you could have a sit down with your daughter and talk to her, you may realize she's a victim as well. She realized what she was losing when you turned your back. I think in her mind, it wouldn't ever be this way, but reality slapped her hard. I pray you can find peace with your past and make amends with your daughter. I'm so sorry. My heart really does feel for you and I know how you feel. My wife cheated and got away with it for a year and a half. I divorced her and she succeeded in turning my kids against me. It was miserable for years. They're grown now and they finally seen she's a serial cheater. She's cheated on every man she's been with. My son still isn't as close to me because she broke the bond him and I had. I guess he's as stubborn as I am. He tells me he loves me with all his heart, but he doesn't visit much and I raised his son since he was two weeks old. My daughter and I have a great relationship. They both have trust issues after seeing their mother cheat for many years. My son seems to end up with trashy no good women, and my daughter says she's afraid she'll never fall in love. Tells me she don't know how to trust anyone. My son falls in love with every girl he meets. His mind's got messed up bad because of her. I try telling them not to settle and they'll find the right one. I was fortunate and found a lady that loves me dearly. My ex tried to apologize and say we can try to work it out. Are you nuts? It's been over 20 years and I'd never put myself in that again. Plus I'd never do my love dirty. She doesn't deserve it. I love her very much and took me years to get my mind and heart straight. It really is sad when your kids are brought into the middle of marital trouble. 
I suggest getting DNA test for the sake of your wife and son. If something happened to you then she can actually contest the will and take a share of everything. If she's yours then nothing has to change, but if she's not then it needs to be shown to your attorney. Unfortunately, her child was considered mine since we were still married, and was entitled to all my estate if I passed. Me ex would have used that to make sure my wife now would get nothing and got kicked out of house I bought. I own two and lot of classics. I had to go to a judge to get it straightened out. Sorry to say, but you'll need to do the same to protect your family. Please contact attorney to see if it's the same in your state. I'm sure you don't want to have to go through what I did, or for your loving wife to have to deal with it later in life. Thank you for responding to my comment. It really meant a lot to me. I'm glad you found love and opened your heart up to it. The heart is really not to be played with. Have a blessed night. The following ending is sent to Royal AI to conclude this story, from the man himself. I'm not a saint myself. There were things that are wrong and there are things I could have done correctly. There was plenty of fights and flaws in my marriage just like any other. I don't feel any good for my ex-wife's suffering. We had a past and we buried it by divorce. My daughter is suffering and though I feel bad for her, I don't want to reach out and give her hopes for reconciliation. Marriage is a cage match. Either both of you can fight each other and one will suffer more than the other, both will suffer, it's inevitable, or you guys can team up to fight problems. There will be sunny, rainy, windy, gloomy, spring, bright, dark and sweet days in a marriage. It takes two to move forward and one to hold. I have a great marriage with my current wife. But that doesn't mean I hate my ex-wife. We are strangers with past now. I wish her well and I hope she recovers. I hope her sister gets out of that abusive marriage, and I hope our daughter gets well. You stay till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. I want to take this moment, to thank you, I really appreciate you, because you bring me a great amount of joy. Subscribe for future uploads and show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button, without mercy. Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.